Perhaps I could talk about the styling. Uh, many of my drivers don't care about that. Maybe how it handles. Who am I kidding? Has chrome wheels. It does have wheels. Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're checking out the 2016 Kia Sedona. And this is the first minivan on Engineering Explained and that is worth celebrating. Don't worry, it's just grape juice. Cheers. Now, as I have no experience reviewing minivans, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to talk about. Something I've noticed online is that the reviews of minivans are about as boring as the cars themselves. Wait, hold on, that's not right. Something I've noticed online is that minivan reviews are terribly boring. Yes, much more optimistic. A sense of hope. So I did what I always do when I'm confronted by something I don't understand. Research. I sought out to discover what compels people to buy these vehicles and how can I best address their needs. With the ambition of creating the best review of a minivan out there, I set my target fairly low. Now keep with me because this is about to get really boring. Now I completed my research and according to the internet, people who buy minivans do it because they are parents and their kids play soccer. It seems strange to me that this would dictate a car buying decision, but the internet's rarely wrong, right? So I decided to seek out proof. More research showed me that there's 25 million kids in the United States playing soccer. Now something else that I saw on the internet says that the average woman in the United States has 1.87 children. I'm going to round that up to two because I don't know what 1.87 children looks like. Now if you're still following, this means there's a market for 12.5 million minivans in the United States. 25 million kids playing soccer, two per family, 25 million divided by two, 12.5 million minivans needed. Okay, I need to do more math. In 2013, there was 530,000 minivans sold in the United States. Now the average age of a car in the United States is 11.5 years old. So if you have 530,000 minivans and they each last for 11.5 years, 530,000 times 11.5 gives us roughly just over 6 million minivans in the United States. Stay with me just a little bit longer. So here's where the math starts to confuse me. According to the internet, minivans are for parents who have kids that play soccer. But also according to the internet, there's only 6 million minivans in the United States, which is half of what's required. Could the hypothesis be wrong? Of course not. You're forgetting about carpooling. You don't buy a minivan because it can fit two kids. You buy a minivan because it can fit four kids. If you can fit double the kids, you only need half the vans. The US doesn't need 12.5 million minivans. It needs half of that, six million minivans. So it turns out the internet was right and people buy minivans because their kids play soccer. Clearly I took this research way too seriously. Now I have to say I admire minivan drivers because they live in a world of eternal judgment where big strong men inflate their egos through giant wheels, lifted trucks, and the latest sports cars to compensate for their lack of well, anyways, it takes far more confidence to sit at a stoplight in a minivan next to a Cadillac Escalade than to sit inside of a Cadillac Escalade next to a minivan. So after thorough research, I've decided the most useful thing I can do for minivan drivers out there is to compare this to a Cadillac Escalade. Wait, what? Minivan drivers deserve a confidence boost, and I think the following can do just that. Now hold on before you instantly dismiss the thought. Let's just start working our way down through the long list of Escalade features and see how the Sedona stacks up. How about heated invented front seats? Check. Heated steering wheel? Check. Adaptive cruise control? Check. 360 degree camera system? Check. Keyless push button start? Check. Blind spot monitoring, lane departure warning, automatic power windows all the way around, power lift gate, tri-zone climate control, check, 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 check. Front and rear parking assist, chrome wheels, Napa leather seat trim, dual sunroofs, driver seat position memory, yes, it's got it all. Refrigerator? No, it does not have a refrigerator. Maybe the Escalade is the better vehicle. All right, well, does the Kia have red, white, and yellow inputs to hook up to the TV screen? No, thankfully, Kia realizes it's not 1995 anymore and includes an HDMI connection instead. But what else can the Kia offer? How about reclining rear seats? I mean, look at this ridiculous seating position. The only other car I've had something close to this in was a Maybach S600, which cost $200,000. Well, what if you like to chauffeur and want the ability to open and close the doors for the rear passengers? Yep, you can do that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just getting tired talking about all of these features. And how about this? A completely hands-free power lift gate. You simply stand next to the back with the key in your pocket and it opens up for you. No fumbling required. When you put the car in reverse, on top of the ridiculous number of cameras and available views, the side mirrors automatically tilt downward to help with backing up or parallel parking. Ooh. Oh, features. 
You know what? I'm done talking about features. Isn't it impressive that it has all of these features and yet all the while you can fit your five or six kids in here? Seriously though, enough with the children. I think we're going to need to cut you off. So what's it like to drive? Well, it's very spacious in here for the driver. Comfortable seats, plenty of room for my legs, great visibility pretty much all the way around. And like I mentioned previously, you've got those cameras uh, for any situation where you're backing up. As far as controls in here, a lot of it's on the steering wheel, which is really nice. And then you've got an abundance over here and the, the screen actually works fairly well, the touch screen. One thing is it's kind of a far reach for some of these buttons. I've got pretty long arms and even for me, some of these like the tune uh, to change the track or whatever, or set up info over there, they're kind of a reach. That said, you can do a lot of that on the steering wheel itself. And one of the things I like about the steering wheel is that for the volume, they've put a dial rather than just a, a switch that goes up or down. So you can actually scroll through, scroll down in volume, scroll up. It's a nice touch. Honestly, I don't know why more cars don't do that. It's a nice thing to not have to go one at a time and instead just scroll to where you want because that's what they always do uh, on the actual infotainment centers. As far as the ride itself, it's very leisurely. I'm comfortable. Uh, it's quiet in here. Actually, on the highway, I tested it to be about just about two uh, decibels louder than the Escalade, 73, 74 decibels. So it is one of the quieter vehicles which I've tested, which is very nice to have. It also has a really good sound system in here. And as I mentioned, you know, it's very comfortable. The suspension is very soft. Everything's well damped. So, you know, bumps, you don't really notice. It's a very comfortable experience. And it also has different driving modes. So I've got it in comfort right now. And what that does is pretty much take out any steering effort that's required. So you can have a little bit of steering effort in normal mode. You can put it in comfort and it reduces that a decent amount. Or you can put it in eco and in eco it'll kind of try to stay in a higher gear so that you use less fuel and always keep the engine RPMs lower. So coming into some corners here, Jason, what are you doing? It's just going to understeer, so I'm not really going to do anything. Uh, but you know, you get plenty of body roll. It's a minivan. That's what you expect. Now, under the hood is a 3.3 liter dual overhead cam V6. Produces 276 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque. So actually, it's got pretty good acceleration when you do put your foot down. And at the lower speeds, honestly, it just fights for traction. So it's nice once you get up to a decent speed and then you put your foot down, you can get a good pull from it. Now the transmission itself is kind of slow to respond and shifts really aren't that fast, uh, but overall it's smooth. None of the shifting is notchy or jerky, so it's a smooth experience, it's just not necessarily quick. And when you put your foot down, there's a nice delay before you actually get any power. Now, as far as fuel economy, it's not rated very good. 17 in the city, 22 in the highway. I did significantly better than that in my own test, but this time the city portion of my fuel economy test was closed off, so this was pretty much just highway. And you know, that's not too bad for a van, um, but that said, there are vans out there which are rated higher, and also the lower trim levels of the Kia Sedona do get better fuel economy. Okay, so we're gonna get a quick zero to 60 in. Wait, why are we doing this? Please, don't act like you don't wanna see it. I'm gonna leave it in drive in normal mode mode and I'm going to leave the traction control on. The ground's a little bit moist and this thing just kind of tends to spin tires so I'm just going to floor it and see what happens. A little bit of tire spin and there's 60. So does it do the things that a minivan needs to do? Well, yeah, I mean, it can store a ton of stuff in the back. It's got decent fuel economy. It's quiet in here and it's extraordinarily comfortable and it doesn't require a whole lot of effort to drive. So as far as minivans go, I mean, sure, it's a solid option. Now, am I saying that this is a Cadillac Escalade for half the price or even less than half the price? Absolutely not. But is it 75% of that vehicle? As far as perks and features, arguably yes. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Well, I wonder if anyone bought any of that. Oh, still recording. Oh gosh, gotta quit doing that. Oh man.